your boy DJ Chesmix up in his house. <laughs> uh, Go back to the 90s with that his house shit. No. <laughs> yes. That's where I'm from. I came from there. I was just there. You can't tell me to go back. I left there. <laughs> you can't tell me to go. I was born there. <laughs> you, can't make, you can't make me go back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, Brian. <laughs> Bombaturgical radiation. Uh, is oh my uh, God. magic uh, left over or leftover magic uh, in an area where a massive spell has been cast uh, that creates uh, abnormalities. Wild magic distorts reality in my lore and uh, uh, enough spells cast in one spot or a sufficiently powerful spell cast in one spot leaves... Uh, magical energy left over, uh, which begins to warp and change the reality around it. Make sense? Yes. I mean, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Who wants to recap last time? I don't remember. I did it last time, so pass. YouTube.com slash Big J ten sixty six. Okay, so for anyone watching this video, go back and watch the other video. We need the views. Uh, not really. Um, <laughs> so last time on Dragon. Nope, that's the wrong series. Last time on Tin. Nope, that's still the wrong series. <laughs> last time uh, we finally made it back to town after a rousing night in the forest with a couple of bears that went at the party. Um, unfortunately, they went way too into it, and we had to put them to sleep. Uh, yeah, let's go with that. Yeah. And then, um, uh, some things happened, and then there was a guy, and he was like, Oh, Jojo, you're approaching me. No. So, <laughs> we got made it back to town. Uh, it was like five in the morning, so nobody but a couple of farmers was awake. We decided we went by the well. A couple of us almost went insane because Sadako won't shut the fuck up. Um, after that, we decided, no, wait, we can't go talk to the boss in charge yet. He's not awake, and if we wake him up, he's going to be mad. So we went back. We cut through a field this time, and we ran into a halfling, a halfling druid, who was very, very frightened. I had oh. notes about the halfling druid. No, I don't. He also I was had... more frightened when uh, Gray Malakov cast Charm Person on him. And it didn't work. No, because he passes save. Yep. I knew I should have taken that other power that let me get, you know, disadvantage for people when they try to do that. Uh, searching for, like, his mentor, and his mentor had disappeared, but he was clearly under the suggestion of, like, the strange goings-on, he had encountered the pale child, Mm -hmm. And then Reagan came all up on us, and Balk got fucking blat blatted when he snuck up on us in the wheat in the field of various bounties down here. And then he took us back to the tavern, and he was going to go get Decius. Is that correct? Yes. Yep, uh, we made it back to the tavern, had a chat with the lovely woman that runs it, uh, told her you should probably leave, this place is messed up, and we had a bit of a discussion as to what we wanted to do. Did we want to stay? Did we want to cut and run? Did we want to find out what the fuck is going on here? Et cetera, et cetera. We basically came to the conclusion that we wanted to know what's going on here, and if possible, we want to fix it. But your girl, she ran off when Reagan told her about uh, Maggie's death. Yep. I don't think she... She didn't stick around with us. She went running off. So we're, like, in the tavern by ourselves right now? And we got questioned uh, by uh, Boss Hog uh, about Maggie's death. Everyone keeps dying. Reminds me who Reagan is again. He is the head guard. Oh, yep. yes. Yes. Dragon is Boss Hog. 
<laughs> yeah, of course. Reagan Arataka. I've been watching anime lately. <laughs> no, I'm just, it's his Reagan name is stuck in my head because of them always introducing him <laughs> in episodes. So. The most powerful psychic. Uh, so you are there in the Verdant Corner Tavern. Helene. If you would please place yourselves around a suitable table uh, as best you can. Maybe this group there in the middle. Um, I want to brood in the corner. No. And you're on the table. Okay. Gray, what about you? Oh, yeah. Sorry. You're good. I have too many tabs open. Matt wouldn't know anything about that, would you, Matt? Shut oh, absolutely up. not. Shut the fuck up. Mr. 5,000 wow. tabs open at once. <laughs> uh, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> oh, so you program too, huh? Let me close that. <laughs> no, I just open tabs and then forget <laughs> about them. Hard to forget about that giant line that you have on your screen. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> the toolbar, of course. <laughs> I have two <laughs> di different sets of tabs. Oh, jeez. No wonder our internet's so slow. <laughs> so. So, I need to put on music. You are gathered in the tavern. How is everyone feeling right now, character-wise? <laughs> That's what to say. Well, the woman is apprehensive and a little... Brooding isn't the right word, but he's staring at his mug of ale and just not saying a whole lot at the moment because nobody else has said anything. I pat my nose and notice there's another drop of blood coming out of it. Guys, I think my brain hurts. Are you yeah, definitely. rather badly affected by the uh, goings on? Yeah, Reagan appears in the doorway, followed by Decius. The two enter the tavern, look around, spot you, and approach. Reagan takes a seat at a nearby table. Reagan, I'm sorry, Decius takes a seat at a nearby table. Reagan follows suit. Decius uh, gives you the once over and says, Who wants to tell me what happened? And for those of uh, everyone watching the videos, yes, they, Decius's voice changes every time I do it. Because I keep forget forgetting what I'm doing. That's okay. Don't worry. I wouldn't remember either way. <laughs> it's been in universe <laughs> weeks since we heard this. We're out of universe, universe weeks. It's been in universe like a, a day and a half. Has it really been? I think so. It feels like we've been here longer. But I will not whistle <laughs> over the mic, so <laughs> I have two I have two dead outsiders. One dead villager. Uh, some kind of strange magic infecting my home uh, or at least this village and started about the time that you lot showed up. So no, it started after we showed up. Explain to me how you're not connected. Uh, the, the guy we came with died, too. Your town infected him. We didn't have anything to do with that. You speak what? as if no man has ever set off his own bomb. With all due respect to the dead, 
That man, for all his uh, economic acumen, do you, having talked to him, truly think he had the wherewithal to kill himself in some suicidal magical plague attack? I have to consider the impossible, because the realm of the possible continues to expand rapidly. How many things are possible that seem strange? And yet, having known the man for a few days, I would sooner say uh, he'd caught a bear than be a, some strange cultist attacker. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna come over here and I'll slam my cat paw on the table, and I'm like, "We're not the ones with the creepy secret of religion. You are. How about you tell us some some things? Maybe we can help." Decius stares at you, uh, and that expression sort of morphs for just an instant into one of immense anger. Uh, he, it curls the corners of his mouth, almost baring his fangs for just an instant before he regains control, biting the expression back and says, Damn it. There's nothing creepy about our religion. <laughs> I, I look and I just say, listen, we, we don't mean any disrespect regarding the bounty, but I just, we we really think that there is something else going on here and that you need our help. And we, we want nothing more than to serve and to help in that regard. And yeah, I'm Hundreds so bad. Hundreds of years this village has sat here. Hundreds of years we have gone <clears throat> through the motions we have carried out the work. Hundreds of years, we have had surety and certainty here in our village on our land. We begin letting outsiders in and strange things happen. Strange, awful things. The only explanation that does not bear blame with you lands the blame at our feet, that our sins of corrupting this precious soil with outsiders has begun to bear ill fruit. Perhaps it was just a single outsider that was the cause of this and not all of them. Maybe no one's actually mad at you, it's someone else messing with you, and it's not us. Because things keep attacking us, and we don't know why. We've watched so many people turn into these strange tent. Wait, no. Is that the right campaign? Damn it. Am I getting uh, my shit? Yeah, they've been changing into weird creatures. Okay. Yeah. Oh, as a clear. Yeah, never mind. Okay. Just making sure I'm not getting things mixed up. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, we've watched, we've watched friends, enemies, and allies all turn into these things. It's It's been... It's not been discriminant. We wouldn't be fighting these things if we were the ones causing it. Actually, no, it has been discriminant. In Desius, what way? Decius gives you a look. Think about it, truly. How many of your people have been affected? One? And even still... The only ones affected had struck with outsiders. The only other ones affected, according to what you have told us and what we have seen, have been outsiders. So, why do you think this is some curse visited upon your people and not some foulness of this land that seeks to spurn anything from outside of it? I don't. Oh, oh, oh. After all, you had mentioned that there was an outsider at the uh, cottage where the poor woman was found. And you saw what happened to the man who came here with us. There is wisdom in your words. 
and I do not say that lightly. Consider this. My grandmother Waxweather was herself an outsider, not born on the soil, a transplant, not apparently a successful one. Let us turn this conversation to one of productivity. What are yes. we losing here, speaking about this? Well, we do have a job to do, arranging trade between this town and where we came from. It seems as though you may have solved the mystery. Outsiders are simply not welcome here. Yet, were we to ward off these cultists that you found, or cultists that may be encroaching upon our territory, we'll need weapons. Proper weapons, not the ones we've made ourselves of stone and wood. So, metals it is. Well, maybe it's not outsiders, it's just those cultists. And they're oh. the ones messing with everything? Oh, uh, so, Gray, are you using that? Yes. And I'm communicating with you, actually. Interesting. And I say to you, are we arming these crazed people now? So in response, because, yeah, I can respond to the message, uh, I will say we are here to negotiate and it will buy us time to find out what is truly going on. If nothing else, when we return, we need not honor the negotiation if we think this place is foul. If anything, if we help them arm, and we, well, well, I can't say anything. Yeah, the the only one that hears this is me and him. Yeah, right. Damn telep telep telepatheticness or tele yeah telepathy. Yeah, telepathy. That that's the word I'm looking <laughs> for. Thank you. Telepathism. Telepathizy. Uh, uh, Reagan who appears to be halfway nodding off, looks up and says, All right, so, what, what are we doing then? Oh, we will discuss something of the trade between our two towns. Right. You need a... Right, Decius says. Now. So, to begin with, the town needs food, and we need to know something of what you are willing to part with. Secondarily, we would need to know if you prefer raw materials to work with, or the finished product. Spears, swords, and the like. Raw materials would be best. We know how to strap a blade in, and there's a forge disused, but there. Yeah. In town. If it's disused, uh, are there any skilled with its use? We can find somebody. Perhaps then, with the initial shipment, some finished weaponry, uh, only in the interests of uh, safety, of course. And after that, purely raw materials. They'll give you time to find, and if necessary, train a blacksmith. In return, for every shipment that you give us. Oh, I'm sorry, I gotta get his voice right. For every shipment you give us. There will be one field's worth of food delivered to cook, to, uh, brought to you at the edge of town, which you can return with to Kuril, whoever your transporters are. I believe that will be an agreeable deal, depending on how large a shipment of metal as you wish for. That being said, we would need to hammer out the exact location of drop-off and pick-up, as it were. One half day's walk from here. Uh, out of character, how many days' walk is it from Kareel to here? Two, uh, a day and a half, closer to two days. Okay. I think that will be agreeable. I may need to send a message back to inform uh, some of the magistrates of Kareel of the change in 
negotiator, as it were. But that should take not very long. And they would be able to sign off on exactly how much metal they're willing to part with for a field's worth of food. There's quite a lot of it. I've seen those. Meat to, meat to... Perhaps in the interests of showing them what they would be <laughs> receiving, a small basket could be put together just to show the mm, beauty of your fruits and vegetables. I am truly impressed by what I've seen in the fields. Proof, yes. Proof of the plenty. Yes. I think that can be arranged. That's interesting. Is it just like that the field makes fruit baskets? You know, like it's just a variety of stuff. <laughs> One thing. Oh, didn't we see a tree that bore like a half dozen different kinds of fruit? Or am I mixed up? Like fruits yeah. and vegetables, too. Yes. So and that's pretty hilarious. It's just like assorted. Decius offers you a small grin and says, and it's the first time you've seen him smile. It's an unsettling expression on his face. It seems almost unsuited for the craggy, uh, cold features. Uh, he says, You saw the fields. Well, we attempted to take a shortcut uh, when we returned from the woods, but considering that we were in the woods because we got lost to begin with, the shortcut was not so short. I see. So, as a preliminary, and Dorman is trying to move on from this subject, um, as a preliminary, with your permission, I and, well, perhaps my group, perhaps we will send a messenger. We have not, we have yet to decide this. We'll send a small sampling of your bounty back to Curiel to let them sample the wares, and with an explanation of the agreement we have temper we have uh, the uh, agreement we have reached uh, for confirmation from the magistrates there he sits silent for a moment almost an uncomfortably long moment before he says you keep saying that word which one bounty it is a common word to refer to produce and grain gleaned from the field you say it in a way, if I may use the Karelian parlance, that implies a capital B. Perhaps it is a habit I've picked up from hearing your own speech. Roll me a deception check. <laughs> uh, let me see the section. Nice. Uh, he gives you another long look and says, I see. Outsiders are strange. Ah, uh, two men from villages a day apart, and I find the other so very odd. After all, one man's tradition is another man's blasphemy. But I would never pass judgment upon any traditions. I have to arrange a funeral. For our dearly departed Granny Waxmother and her daughter. I'll tell you this. We are in such need of weapons that I am loath to bring down punishment on outsiders who may have otherwise been strung up for heresy or murder. Hmm. I'll give you this one chance to tell me now. Did you have anything to do with the death of Granny Waxweather or Maggie? I tell you as truly as I breathe here. When last any of my companions met, any of myself or my companions left that house, Maggie was walking and talking as you or I would. Deception. Fuck! <laughs> Says what I'm good at, man. Oh, damn it. What? What? You rolled an 18. 
<laughs> oh, so fucking close. Okay. So it was the bandit you brought to town, you say? Uh, the bandit that tagged along with us, and we did not know he was a bandit. I see. Strange fortunes and unfortunate strangers. That's a great tenor phrase, man. That was out of character. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, we'll see to it that your basket is arranged. In the meantime, you're free to attend the funeral. Is that later this morning? My scraping up weather, wax weather. Uh, I spoke with her only briefly, and, but uh, I think we will pay our respects. She seemed like a nice lady. Good day to you, and I will see you in a few hours at the funeral. Uh, I will see you, and I hope that, other than that, your day is fruitful. Bounteous. Hey -oh. Bounteous, even. He just inclines his head. He said it. He did the thing. Roll credits. <laughs> and uh, Reagan, who has by this point very nearly gone to sleep. <laughs> oh, right. We're done. Yes, we're done, Reagan. Let's move on. And the two leave the tavern. God, I love social combat. Fuck. Roll the strike with words. <laughs> That's a so thing in Exalted. My dog wanted to get held, and now she won't stop standing up on my chest and trying to block my vision of the game. Uh, once they're gone, Dorman's going to glance around. I hope. Oh, that... you know what must be done. Once they're. Pet dog. <laughs> yes, pet. Scritch, scritch, scritch. Give the pupper all the loves. The dogs are deserving of pets. Dogs deserve everything. We do not deserve dogs. Indeed. Uh, once they're gone, Dorma will look around and just kind of slump a little bit. Oh, that one's better than I expected. I'm just glad I kept my mouth shut. You seem to have that well in hand. I think you could have contributed and nothing would have exploded, but uh, oh, I'm glad I could live up to your expectations. And I have us an out if we need it, and uh, perhaps a way to to these fruits. So, uh, so I think I might have an idea about what this religion of theirs is, and some perhaps key words about what they believe in. It seems like worshipping the bounty of the land is what they're oriented around. Something. I know, yes. I know when I was delirious earlier, they were reacting to that. So there must be something connected in that church. I bet you there's something inside the church that's actually powering or giving this land its its bounty, and it's probably some kind of magic. Gray, who has taken a seat long before when or when this uh, meeting was already being held, uh, chimes in and says, "Oh, what would give you that idea? The fact that." They want no outsiders close to the place? Mm, no, not necessarily, because the, the, up until this point, it's been merely suspicion that they have something in there. It could be that they're just really secretive with their traditions, like some kind of cult or whatever. And you know. as our friend has already elegantly described how only outsiders have been the ones that have transformed into these abominations. 
Right. I can only imagine what they're trying to hide inside that place. It's so, probably the reason why things are transforming. I imagine so. So, are your pleasantries with these native cultists done? Maybe. I think we need to do a shipment. And then come back, get paid. And then see how we can use that to our advantage to gain access to the building. Cat cop. It might be worth a try. They seem inclined to actually accept our help now. I think we've managed to make some great strides diplomatically. Oscar, meow, what's going on here? <laughs> I was just talking about how I like slammed the table and it's like, you guys in a creepy religion. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I certainly think that we want to get in the church, but if we try to just go get in the church, they're going to be pissed off and they might not like want to honor the trade agreement we just made. So I think it makes sense that maybe we want to like make a trade and then like, and then maybe like spy on the place and figure out how we can get in. We might like fit in a bit better or something. If uh, if Gray could visibly like actually face palm, he would. But he's wearing a mask, so he's not going to. And he's going to say, ah, "Is it not apparent that whatever bounty, as it's been elegantly described, is not the cause of what is going on to these transformation of outsiders? You still want to make this trade agreement." with people who could be possibly using heresy or any other number of dark magics to accomplish said amazing feats of productivity. The trade agreement was to buy us time and an out if necessary. Well, apparently not to your compatriots. It is purely another paycheck for them. Hmm, depends on how you look at it. Yeah, that's nice too, but... I don't remember last week. I, I remember last week I cracked open the fruit and I had to pass a constitution save. So I, I did, but did anybody else, like, experience that disgusting smell when I cracked open that fruit? Because, I mean, that is an interesting oh, point. We don't, we don't necessarily want to be, like, shipping this shit off somewhere. Even, like, the little basket, we, don't, we might not want to get beyond these borders. Did you mention the fact? I can't even remember. Did you mention the fact that that was actually a thing? Like, I don't when... remember. Yeah, I was hoping DM could clarify. Does anyone recall? <laughs> Does anyone recall if he mentioned the fact that the fruit that he picked up was kind of fucky? I think. Uh, I don't I, I, remember yeah, that. I don't think he mentioned it, but I think we noticed it, like his expression. So, this would be a perfect time, if you wanted to, for your character to chime up about that. Of course, if you want to. Oh, uh, well, he's not necessarily... Well, he, yeah, he is talking about still making a trade. Yeah, yeah we don't. Well, he's talking yeah, about making also... a trade, and then Gray's bringing up the fact that these people are, like, doing weird magic shit to accomplish this... Uh, bolstering produce that they've been producing you know so mm -hmm. this if you if you wanted to chime in that this about that particular detail that's be perfect time to do it yeah, understood yeah no but no um, okay. oh good <laughs> hey man secrets be secrets that's all good you argue them out amongst yourselves Considering the, the source of the food, we should definitely check it to just make sure it's safe to eat before we start talking about trading it. Well, that's why I asked for the basket. If we can take a small sample back with us, one that they won't try to kill us for plucking from the fields ourselves, we can have uh, specialists, priests, arcane uh, students, and the like, look over it and try to ascertain where and what effect this might be. I think we did that once already. I think we looked at it, but we never brought a uh, 
example to like like a high priest or to like a uh, uh like a tenth level wizard or some shit. Yeah, I mean that's possible, I guess, if this other place has this thing available to us, but we'd have to leave to accomplish that. Yep, and th like this is not the be all end all, but it's like I I'm it it's an option. And that's I'm trying to get us more options than just cut and run or break into the church and get killed. Um, you actually hear uh, sort of a sniffling sound from behind the bar, and it looks like Aura has come out of her room. And she says, you can't pick anything from the field yourself. And why is that? You're not allowed. The goddess won't allow it. It turns to ash in your hands. That is not what has happened. Well, something happens to it. You can't pick... If you're not from here, if you weren't born on the soil, you can't pick the fruit. That's... interesting. It turns sour and rotten. I can't pick the fruit from here. I have to get it from the workers. I hesitate to bring up a painful subject, but I'm assuming that was true of Dame Waxweather and her granddaughter? She gives you a hard look, and uh, it, it's, it's rough to watch because her face is, 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 is glaring, and like there's this, this screwed up, angry expression on her face, uh, but you can still see tears welling in her eyes, and she says, Right. She, Maggie and her had to to buy food from the from the from the vegetable stall in the center of town, or the salted meat stall, or they they couldn't. If you kill something in the woods and you weren't born here, it 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 turns rotten immediately. If 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 you pick fruit it and you weren't born here. It, 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 it rots immediately. You... Uh, it's, just the, it's just the way this place is. That's, thank you for the information. If you're wondering whether the food is good, you've been eating it since you got here. So, a uh, question to the GM. Is any of this in things that this person is bringing up abnormal to hear? from our experience as our characters inside this world? Yes. God, yes. Okay. Uh, so, has there ever been any other regions that we've heard that had this particular type of thing that they have to do? Like security locks, basically? Yeah. No. Not, not in this fashion. You've certainly heard of wizards cursing things so that people can't take them. That's fairly common practice in, in wizard's towers. You're like, you know, you, you know, never touch a wizard's balls because they're cursed. Uh, I I mean, I would just say never touch a wizard's, wizard's balls, but I mean, hey, uh, <laughs> the, um, I'm gonna, yeah, like, Gray's gonna be like, um, just comment on this, like, you know, this has never struck you as odd? It struck me as odd since the day I got here. But how how exactly how long have you been uh, here? Two years. Did they give you this tavern? I inherited it. From who? My father. And he was here as a native. No, no, my family. My father started the tavern here in his younger days. The, the, the mayor before Decius allowed it, but he was treated as an outsider too. But So is... what exactly does categorize a person as a native to this land? You had to have been born here. You had to have been born in Deca's Bend to pick or harvest the food. I see. That's just how it is. You come in here and you tell me that this town is sick. You, you tell me that... that Maggie's dead. 
You can't tell me both of those things. Because without Maggie, I don't know where else to go. I was I was going to leave with her someday, but oh shit! But she's dead. So this is what I have. This sick land. There's nothing wrong with the food as long as the natives pick it. It's not poison. If it was, I'd be I'd have been dead long ago. Then how? How long has this been going on? What? How long has what been going on? This tradition of only natives picking food, only natives doing anything of note inside this particular region. Since Dinkus Vim himself first communed with Opilia at the river's edge. And how long ago was that? Hundreds of years. In hundreds of years, this land has experienced a influx in produce. For hundreds of years, this place has never communed with any other settlement. Hylia said not to, I was told. The bounty was theirs and theirs alone, and hers and hers alone. That's what I was told. Or I am um, sorry for your loss. I don't want to hear it. I just want you to stop making me so frightened of a place I no longer want to leave. I have no wish to drive you from your home, but I have seen no, it. No buts! If you want to keep your rooms here, you will not say another word. What if we just want to fix it? Fix what? Well, I mean, people are Food randomly having seven? tentacles sprouting uh, out of them. Food for seven? Food! She's, like, getting more and more angry. Food through the winter! Uh, Dorman is going to, like, subtly point at him, and uh, you hear in your head, you should apologize, and we need sorry. to change the subject. Yeah, sorry. There's nothing to fix. Just because you don't understand it doesn't mean it doesn't work. People have lived here for hundreds of years, safely and soundly. You're right. My apologies. We will not bring the subject up again. Thank you. I'm closing the, the front end of the bar until Maggie's funeral this afternoon. Of course. If you need anything, there's some food back here. There's some. There's a barrel of ale and some water. You can take what you want. My thanks. And she floats back to her room. When she's gone, Dorman's going to. Well, he's going to sigh like that. And... Ah, Oops. this is a complicated subject. Nobody likes hearing them at their home, maybe. So. Gray's going to uh, gesture everyone to pull up a chair to the table that's down here. All right. So, here we are once again. What are our plans? Well, we need to find out what's in the church, and I imagine they will uh, not give us a whole lot of time before they shove a basket into our hands and send us on our way. That is um, most likely what is going to happen. So tonight, so... we check out the church. Then what say the rest of you? This may completely destroy your trade deal with this area. Uh, I think at this point it's a risk worth taking. I mean, there's some crazy stuff going on here. I'm pretty interested, too, to at least just figure out what's going on. Whatever has been going on here has been going on here for hundreds of years. And 
with that, I imagine there is something more powerful than any of us has ever, ever seen responsible for these fruits of labor. Are you willing to take on such a powerful enemy? I, I merely ask because uh, when we come across whatever horror that is spawning this very particular type of rich soil and fruit and wildlife, I would like to know that the rest of you will be by my side to fight against it, and not fleeing away from such horrors, clawing at the walls, or perhaps even your own eyes. Are you willing to take on such a task? I have seen the strange and the horrible before. I will not run unless we all run. I will not leave someone behind. He looks to the other people inside the party. Mm, sounds like fun. I don't like the idea of clawing my own eyes, but, but, I, but I'm in. Certainly, I'd like to get rid of the gnawing in my head and the visions of the child. Is that everyone? What about you, Terrell? How did you care to react? Uh, Terrell is leaned up against the, uh, the wall behind him, fast asleep. <laughs> Someone wake up Terrell, please. <laughs> My favorite part is Terrell's not even against a wall if you go by this. He's just leaning against the table behind him. Just, like, his head thrown back, just... <clears throat> Stop imitating me. <laughs> <laughs> so, is anyone going to wake up to real? I throw a, a small, like, I throw, like, a fork at him, like, at his body and try not to, like... So, roll me a, to real, like... Roll me, roll me a, no, hang on. Roll me a flat d20. Who? Okay, you're good. You hit him in the eye. All right. Uh. <laughs> no, if you rolled in that one, that was going to do damage. Um, I pick up the fork and say, where is Barovia? <laughs> <laughs> so Tyrell, like, oh. jolts awake. <laughs> uh, what, 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 what's going on? Uh, what What'd you guys say? Huh? Hey, where'd those two guard guys go? What's so, going on here? So, um, while you were conveniently sleeping, the rest of us have decided to check out this church here, as well as possibly confront something that has been alive for several hundred years and is mutating the land and people around it. Ah, yes. A church that doesn't want people in it seems evil to me. Let's do that. All right, then. If everyone is on board, then that's what we should do. Are we going to, like, time lapse to nighttime for this particular thing? Because I don't think there's anything... We're going to time lapse to the funeral. Okay. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, the funeral kind of sneaks up on you guys. Um, uh, Decius, Aura, Reagan, the dark-skinned dwarven guard that you met coming into town, uh, and, and all sorts of townsfolk have gathered as uh, two coffins are brought down the center lane 
uh, from Granny's house to toward the center of the village. Uh, that morning rain has has spilled into a a, a, a heavier uh, down downpour, um, but a, a small tent has been erected uh, uh, around the well uh, in the center of town that allow people to stand around it. Um, I'm nervous about this next part, and I'm even more nervous knowing it's going on YouTube. Yeah, no, never mind. Oh, you got this. Um, Does there need to be any, like, uh, I guess, disclosing of this potential things inside the scene that's about to happen? So people aren't, you know, surprised in the wrong kind of way? Slap a warning label on this shit. I'm sorry. Repeat that. Does does a does a warning label need to be slapped on this shit for people that are no, that are no, listening so. to what's going on? No, and I'm not really spreading the video around except to people who ask for it, and at which point I will tell them, you know, this is this has this content in it. Okay. I mean, also, I guess Jay could you know put some thing in it, you know, some. Honestly, at this point, all we've already got a warning just from us talking about it now. Fair, yeah. This is like, uh, I, I, I mean, it's like it may one person's, you know, horror is another person's, like, you know, meh. Right. So, <laughs> any anything in particular, you should you should throw up a warning for Chess on this, or or you just don't want to spoil, I guess, what's gonna for us, what's happening. Uh, gore. Okay. All right. Cool. So, so squeamish beware. Wait, so everyone's surrounding the well? Isn't that the well with the creepy ring lady? Sure is. I bet you that's where the body's going to go. God, there are I hope. two coffins passed uh, along the crowd. Carried mainly by guards, Reagan at the front. Um, you watch as Decius uh, sings a hymn. You hear his voice kind of booming over the square. In the garden grows the bounty by the river, down and deep. Growing goddess by the river, call us home to sleep, to sleep. And he repeats, singing that same hymn again and again, as the bounty, or as the as the bodies are uh, brought along uh, this this crowd until the people standing by the well take the coffins. The first one disappears down the well quickly. They stumble with the second, nearly dropping the body within the mangled corpse that was Granny Waxweather. But they close the lid quickly before the mess inside can be seen, and aligning the coffin more carefully, they drop it down the well. I was right. Decius, as the final, or as the second coffin, Begins falling, says, We reap what we have sown. Goddess, call us home. He looks at the crowd and says, We have, we have lost two people today. Three, if you count the outsider from the night before. We are loath to let anyone go, of course, not to let them go so early. They were not ready. But they were, they were not bounteous of flesh, they were bounteous of soul, of spirit. 
in that we shall fi they shall find in that our goddess shall find satisfaction i think sorry fuck be watchful friend as always be careful tread not upon places that we have asked you not to walk. Do not leave the village. Do not offend Opilia, for has she not given you certainty and surety and plenty? Has she not brought you safety and security and plenty? Does she not offer you simplicity Eternity and plenty. This is the destination to which we all aspire this well. I have chosen to share this for these outsiders that you see in the crowd amongst you, so that they may see that we are not the cruel, desperate insular people they may think us to be, but rather dedicated, faithful, and sure. This is how we treat our dead. Not splattered across the floor of a tavern, but given holy and holy to the goddess below. That is all. Thank you. You may return to the fields. And the workers begin to part. Decius looks at you and, and says, you'll have to stay one more night in the tavern. With this rain, I don't fancy your chances of getting a, our best crop. I would want to present nothing but your best to the magistrates of Kirill. I thought so. If you'll excuse me, I have other matters to attend to. Reagan, Elandra, and the, 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 the dwarf woman perks up. Yes? Come with me. We have work. Goodbye, outsiders. I shall see you on in the morning. And he and the two guards depart. Gray has been towards the back of the crowd during this and after this display messages Dorman and says no doubt we have to go down to the bottom of that well didn't you guys don't you guys keep saying that there's a monster in the well or something this is a, a message oh okay my bad yeah. <laughs> Dorman will nod and But uh, accurate that statement is still accurate. Oh yeah, so. that's that's incredibly fucking accurate. Yeah. And I'm goddamn terrified. Um like a little out of character, I'm like, oh god, we are gonna have to go down into the well. Um Dorman will nod and respond with uh we likely will. I hesitate to think that We've been drinking water, bodies floating in it. I don't think that's where they get their water from. I hope not. Uh, I think Dorman's going to gesture to the rest and say, we should return and speak somewhere in privacy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's how wells work. So, uh... <laughs> also, I, I, I wanted to, I wanted to comment, Emilrith, you you did catch my turn of phrase there. Yeah, I saw what it, is, what is that? Holy and holy. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> well, well, well. I see what you did there. <laughs> Damn. 
All right. right. This video, like, could could he not have gone without congratulating himself for that? <laughs> Listen, anyone who knows any like anyone like between the two of us knows that no, 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 it can't it has to be. Yep. All right. That's uh. Uh, back to the tavern, I imagine, here to yeah. gather together in one of our rooms and have a conversation. Okay. Also, also, have we ever been to the apothecary? You have not. You haven't really traveled around the town much. Yes, yeah, yeah. we might want to see, uh, since we might be going in spooky wells and churches, we might want to see if they have anything that could help us. Maybe an invisible potion or something cool like that. Oh, because that's not incriminating or all, at anything. I mean, nah. just go to, the, go to the local apothecary, you buy potions that are generally sorted for specific stealth missions, and everything works out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Potions are nothing special. Phantom? Yeah. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> That was the most thickest bit of sarcasm <laughs> that I could muster. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm going to take y'all back to the tavern. The back of the tavern. Uh, and I am going to be right back. Y'all can roleplay it out a little bit. Okay, cool. That's not sound the scheme, everyone. <laughs> The only one that can hear us is the audience, and they're not going to be able to do anything about it. <laughs> um. All right. Who? Uh, I guess whose room are we choosing to have this particular eating in? That's what we're calling it. Party in my room. All right. Move yourself there. <laughs> I would vote uh, the biggest room. Uh, who has the biggest room? Is that is like does that is that a room that's that's belongs to specifically someone? Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember. Sure. Does any of us have this room? Does I'm, this room belong to any of? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was uh, Imorith because he's like high class and needs the biggest room. Fucking yeah. Else. Okay. All right, Imorith, why aren't you up here? Get yourself in this room. Oh, he's AFK. Yeah, he BRB. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, all right. Um. I'm gonna say, uh, uh, I mean, it's fuck it. It's like this is the only. I can't see an opportunity where this is probably gonna come up again, uh, with what we're about to do. So, uh, Gray brings in a chest from his room and sets it down in this one, and he sits on top of it. Uh, at this point, I it's getting close to dark. So, uh, as a quick side note, I think Chez stepped away. Yes, he did. He said okay, to have. Sorry. He wanted us to have a conversation. Well, my bad. My bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. oh, sorry. I made the joke. I was like, the only one that can hear us is the audience. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> plan what we want to plan. Chez can't hear us, and they can't do anything about it. <laughs> you know. Right, sorry, but, uh, sorry, I interrupted. Chess. All good. Uh, so yeah, Gray brings in this chest into the room, and he sits on top of it. It's getting, I imagine, at this point, pretty close to being dark. I mean, Chess might correct me on that, but uh, uh, regardless, for uh, narrative sake, uh, I'm going to say the chest is like slightly jostling as he sits down on top of this thing. Like there's uh, the sounds of scraping and the other stuff. And uh, Gray is going to say to the rest of you. So, we will probably have to go in that hole if there is not what we seek to destroy the darkness inside this land. It's most likely going to be in the well. I still say we should go to the church to see if the heart of this particular perversion lies inside that place, but um, that well is more than likely going to be the place where we're going to have to end up at. I think you're right. I hope you're not right. I hope uh, 
Well, hope only does so much. Uh, I want you all to be aware that I am here to hunt down the things that crawl. Like these clawing visions that we have all been experiencing. I've seen the distant stares and the jitters that come across all of you every so once in a while. And even myself, I have experienced the vision inside that particular well that almost compulsed me to jump inside of it. What are you all willing to sacrifice to be able to take out this darkness? I saw that I have to test your faith as it is more than once. But my life is devoted to this task. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are, what are we entering a blood, blood pact or something? I'm, I mean, I'm not chopping off a finger or anything. No, I don't require you to make any particular sacrifice. I am just wanting to know how far your allegiance goes. If, say, we come into that church and it does not hold the thing that is causing this madness, and we do have to go down that well, will the rest of you follow? Or will I be going it alone? I will do what needs to be done. If that means following you into the depths, I will go. What say the rest of you? My money hungry companions. Comrades, if you will. Uh, I, I still hope we don't have to go down there, but if if we do, um I'm not sure. Does anyone else speak up? Oh, you're missing one. Yeah, yeah, we are. How about Big J, you got any response for that? Uh, at this point, Tyrell's just going to say, uh, my Warhammer thirsts for the blood of my enemies. Well, you must cleanse this land. So, that yeah, is a, giggity. That is good enough answer, if any. Is there, um, we said we're missing one, but only three of answer. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, welcome back, Jess. Hey. Mm. Oh, I was supposed to say something. Fuck. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there was... Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, personally, I kind of want to stay away from the well. It's already tried to eat me a few times. But this may come to us going into it. Are you willing to take that plunge? If I have something to fortify my will, perhaps. I'm a bit shaken. Well, maybe a display of someone's convictions will help you otherwise. No, I mean like a potion. Like a potion. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's great. Don't get me wrong, but... I, I I'm sure I there's enough liquid one. courage downstairs for you to pretend. No, it. not that kind of potion. <laughs> I think I need to see the apothecary. That is well and fine. But if you are not able to find such things... Will you go with the rest of us? I'll try, but I, you know, I just don't want to endanger the mission. Emerald is back. 
and I need to run to the bathroom like real quick. Yeah, go for I... it. I'm not sure if Emmerath has context of what's going on. Yeah, so Emmerath, uh, Gray is asking if it comes down to everyone having to jump down into that well and fight whatever horror is inside of it. If you are willing to do that, he wants basically a confirmation that you are willing to go that far to destroy the corruption that has plagued this place. Not the okay. Revealing this is like your life goal or whatever. Yeah. Is, uh, he has a strong conviction to seek out these sorts of abominations and destroy them. Okay, yeah, so... Yeah, Immorith does not have, like, a strong connection to Grey, so, like, his his own motivations, they're, they're his, and Immorith is not, you know, really not psyched about going near the well. Um, I suppose if it if it really came to it, if the rest of my men here jumped, we'd jump. Could we not curry favor with with others? Can we can we not bring about reinforcements? There was the druid and his mentor. There have to be other outsiders here we could bring on our side. That is a possibility, yes. But I merely want to see the word the rest of you here in this moment. Because what we find in that church may very well force our hands down into the depths of that well. And if that comes to pass, I wanted to know if you were ready for that. But more than half of your companions here have stated that they are willing to take the plunge. <sighs> I have not been completely honest in why I am here. I seek out these creatures, these types of magic, darkness itself, and destroy it with its own means. Inside this chest lies the only thing left that I have to a normal life. Inside this chest is my convictions and my sacrifice. At this point, Gray holds out his hand and he lights with a s actual the spell light. And um, as he does this blatantly, in front of himself. Gray does not have any shadow that is cast from this. And he gestures behind him to show him to show this. Inside this box is my shadow. The shadow that killed me. Mark, yeah, can you elaborate on that? I am part of a family of hunters, and we all take a challenge when we enter the fold. This challenge is to fight and destroy the thing that makes us human. Every one of you, every living creature has a shadow. I do not. It has been separated from me, as it has 
every other member of my family. And I carry this burden with... Uh. So that's why you wear the creepy mask. No, the mask is for a different purpose. Oh, oh okay, my, my bad. <laughs> That is also another tradition. My, my bad. I want to ask about that. <laughs> that is fine. The this is how far I am willing to go for the purposes of destroying the things that crawl in the dark. I joined them. For without a shadow, I am one with them. <laughs> I do not ask any of you to make such a deep pledge as this. I just merely want to reveal that this is how far I will go. And without you, I will pursue this corruption wherever it may lie. May it be in that well. May it be in any other place on this mortal plane. And until that job is done, I will not be able to stop. I will not stop. When my duty is done, the shadow will once again be mine, and I will be able to pursue a normal life. But until then, it is my burden to carry it. Is the shadow angry? Why do you keep it in a box? I imagine you're unaware. This shadow comes from a different plane. It is what a the rest of you would know as an undead. It is a piece of me. Did, did you say something like that in Strut? Did you say the shadow would your role play? Did, uh, did you say the shadow would return to you after you had rid the world of these evil abominations? I do not know the specifics. It is a secret that is kept in my family, and no one has merged back with the shadow that they carry. Normally, okay, was... people die before that happens. My quest is to illuminate all the darkness inside this world. And as you might suspect, that is impossible. Yeah. Well, damn, yeah. In character, I was going to ask you how old, were you, how old you were. You're asking how old he is? Yeah. Let me see. I'm 24. I've been doing this for a number of years. Twenty, twenty-four. Yes. As in, as in, twenty-four rotations around this this central star. Or however this world works, Dan. Don't want to presume. You're fine. Yes. Now, this world actually uh, has a star rotating around it. It's on the back of a giant turtle. I'm kidding. <laughs> yes. I, it, 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 in my hundred plus years, my good man, I've seen more evil than could fill three of your lifetimes. I'm I'm sorry to tell you, but this might be a futile effort. Um, Such is the conviction of my family. I think he's aware of that, yes. I will most likely die doing my purpose. And that is why I ask. When I face this darkness, will the rest of you be at my side or at my back? I'll be with you. I'll be at your back, protecting your back. 
<laughs> Definitely not picking your pocket. Yeah, I'll probably be behind you too. I might be shouting word of encouragement though. <laughs> <laughs> like the doorman is going to nod and say, you have shared greatly with us, my friend. I have traveled alone for a long time now. I have been hunting for what feels like ten generations, but I imagine has only been about six years. I don't wish to travel alone anymore. I've said before that I follow the path of the wild hunt. And to follow such a path, there are only two roles. The hunted or the hunter. It's always best to hunt with a pack. Dorman is going to reach up and push back his hood and remove the owl mask. Oh, God! And everyone sees a spray of black crow-like feathers instead of hair. A pair of small horns and crimson skin. You see a tiefling. If I am to hunt with you, I would have you know me. Wait, you're not a bird person? I follow one, but I am not one. Huh. So Gray's probably a tiefling too, then. <laughs> I do not ask that you bury your own face. You have shared enough. But I have come to trust each of you, to some degree or other. And it is not fair to ask you to hunt with me without knowing who I truly am. I am Dorman, follower of the Pale Prince of Owls, one with the Wild Hunt. It is nice to meet you, Dorman. And a pleasure to meet you, Grey. My face will be revealed in time. This is not the time for it. I'm still stuck on the chest, so what would happen if we let your shadow out right now? Oh, I imagine it would try to rip you limb from limb, draining the strength from your body until you fall a lifeless corpse on the ground. Oh, dear. And then, only after that, would your own shadow emerge and seek out the same to the other living inside this room. I wouldn't advise it. It would also damn me to ever returning to the light. Hmm, okay. I, was, I don't know, I was just thinking maybe we could put, send that thing down the well. But I understand. No, I would very much like to be able to return to a normal life if I can fulfill my purpose. Sorry. Yeah, of course. I'm sorry, I just... It would damn me from ever returning to the light. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I fucking love you when you get in full roleplay mode. You're goddamn amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, uh, man, I've been sitting on this for a bit, and I was like, ah, yeah, there'll be a moment. <laughs> uh, open the chest. <laughs> damn it, Terrell. Yeah, that's cool. Can I give you my inspiration? <laughs> oh no, Phantom, absolutely, take inspiration Yeah, I, Phantom definitely needs inspiration for this Because that shit was amazing Thank you So um, Shall we move on to uh, Yeah Is it night already? Or yeah, I was kind of thinking that maybe we could stop by the potion shop So that's why I didn't want it to be night yet Uh, it is not night yet. Um, although it is approaching ten o'clock, where Brian is, and I don't know what Brian, how you feeling, bud? 
No, we're probably good till like 10.30. Okay, give me just a moment. And yeah, yeah, we'll be sure to not buy anything incriminating. <laughs> Ocean of Unlocked Church. Okay, so I'm going to tell you now, y'all can't go to the well yet. <laughs> I, got some, I got some shit I want to do in the well, and you can't go, you can't go there yet. <laughs> All right, are you hearing a voice straight to the well? <laughs> Dorman looks up, who said that? <laughs> Me, God. Which one? The Pale Prince of the Owls. <laughs> Uh, I've been sitting yeah. here. <laughs> Which one? And he's like, oh, oh um, yes, of course. <laughs> I'm the pale prince of the. I'm not pale. God damn it. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm pale. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. No, we can head to the ap apothecary. Give me just a tick. Yeah, Loading. follower of the wild hunt, I really like felt strongly that both of your characters seemed very Witcher to me. But that's pretty cool still. I mean, like, I love your concepts. Um Yeah, I mean I've I've got a there's a you could assert whatever, you know, kind of hunter of uh monsters sort of persona inside my character in a in a way. I, I took a very generic uh, kind of path with this character. This is a, this also this is a lot darker character and more serious character than I generally run. That's not completely true. I probably I've always pretty serious most of the time, except for that one scene that Ches keeps reminding me of. Yeah, you guys, you guys. You have to leave, or I'll kill you. <laughs> if you don't leave, then I'll kill you. <laughs> embrace the super serious character and i'm like a tabaxi who has like an arc nemesis who's a dog <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah this is uh this is not generally in my uh brand of like uh character to run also totally not the class i would i this is exactly the kind of character i like to run like mysterious backstory very like socially uh enabled because I, I love to talk. I, I love to be the face. Uh and can cast a couple spells. Yeah, I um I am generally what's considered I guess like second face inside most games. Like if there isn't a face character, then I am the face character. <laughs> you are just give me one more minute here. Of course that's purely role play wise. That's not like stat wise most of the time because I play barbarians. That's my normal classes I play. Oh yeah, that's cool. Love barbarians, man. So far, I've played the most bards, but I like to just kind of mix it all up. Yeah, I don't play casters very often. I play charisma classes, rogue, warlock, bard, sorcerer. I actually haven't played a sorcerer yet. A wild magic sorcerer in Chez's other game. And I've only rolled on the table once so far, though. Oh yeah, it's a it's purely a GM thing too. Like the rules for that is like it's basically like yeah, you roll a d twenty whenever you uh, make a you know cast a spell, but that's an optional thing. Your your DM tells you when to roll the d twenty. You no, could be one, thing, yeah, one ability you can use once per day that makes that pretty much it says straight out like you have to roll on the table. So that oh, yeah. times I've rolled. Oh okay. Yeah, I um actually that was initially the first the character that I was considering playing for this game, but then Chess told me that it had a more serious tone. I was gonna be a wild magic sorcerer goblin that was possessed by a Neil Bog, and they basically satiated the uh the Neil Bog and then it left the goblin. And the goblin became the jester at that point that was supposed to satisfy the Neil Bog so it didn't return. And the jester was like, oh, I get free reign and do whatever the fuck I want? Then fuck all you! I'm gonna go be an adventurer! <laughs> <laughs> and so the Neil Bog possession gave him weird powers. And that's how he became a sorcerer. Which is a backstory that I fucking love. Yes. 
And uh, the, it's one of the two backstories that I had for uh, a, a wacky kind of spellcaster goblin. The other one was going to be a trickster domain cleric, because why the hell not? Yeah. Understand why Dorman's token is always larger than it should be. Y'all heading to the apothecary, right? I didn't just design a map for nothing. No, we're heading to the apothecary. Yes, please. Oh, I thought we were going to the church. No, we're going to the well. He, he wants to go to the apothecary now. first before we go to the church. Unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, if we're about, about to do some shit, we might as well stock up. Yeah. I yeah, think that's, I think that's a bad idea. But no, I, mean, I demand we go to a random ruin in the middle of the wood. <laughs> Listen, I've spent money on maps. I can do that now. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> this game will never end. Like, <laughs> probably ill advised money, but I did it, so it's done. The, um, all right, I think uh, we're all going to the apothecary, Chez, so. That was the saddest, like, end to that sentence that could have been. I <laughs> you know, maybe a waste of money, but I did it, so it's <laughs> yeah. done. That is that man very scared? Uh, he is very nerdy, and that's the nerdiest token I could find. Oh, is he? Oh, okay, he looks absolute. His token it looks absolutely ter terrified. He also looks like he could possibly be, um, in the military with that kind of vestment. I don't know. It's it's very strange. To me, he looks like a Call of Cthulhu character. Like that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, very much Call of Cthulhu. That you mention it. He he looks like like the 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 FBI agent who just saw a show goth for the first yes! time. Yes. Like, oh, I'm he, not paid nearly enough for this. Yes. <laughs> Sees that shit's fucking terrified. Okay. All right. Now we're we're done ragging on your token choice. <laughs> yes. Oh, are you are you good? You good? <laughs> I mean, I can keep going if you want me to, man. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Keep ragging. Keep ragging. <laughs> Keep keep racking up them D4s, and I'm going to roll the next time he takes psychic damage. <laughs> All right. Uh, this guy looks like his mom still cuts his hair. <laughs> like, he just started with the FBI. His mom still cuts his hair. He's the rookie on the force. A grizzled old veteran is about to take him out on a first job. He just saw the grizzled old veteran get his head chewed off by a fucking show goth or... Uh, I really hope you don't meet the pale child anytime soon. <laughs> I, I, just, I, just, I just really hope you don't, because it could be really bad for you. <laughs> that, or you just saw somebody get stung by a Migo and thinks that... Take, you're going to take 10d4 psychic damage, Matt. <laughs> oh, no, no. And, I don't, and I, don't mean, I don't mean Dorman. I mean you. Oh, okay. <laughs> you I, I know what it is. I know what it is. What? Just realize that his girlfriend is a deep one hybrid, and that's why she's been losing her hair. 20, he's also 20d4, Matt. He's also not wearing like uh, actual prescription glasses. He just wears those glasses because he thinks it makes him look more important. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> those uh, those papers that he uh, that he's carrying, or possibly uh, a folder that's off to the side of the token, is uh, the divorce papers that his uh, wife just said gave to him before she transformed into a horrible abomination. Y'all are y'all are y'all are roasting like ice cream in winter, and that you're not at fucking all. <laughs> Can we play the video game? <laughs> the video game? I'm sorry. <laughs> Unpause. 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 All right, all right. Back to back to game. Uh, welcome to the bottled bounty. Uh, the bottled bounty? I'm sorry? The, the bottled bounty. Fertilizers uh, or something. There are a, a variety of plants, uh, herbs, and, and desiccated uh, uh, vegetables and uh, sort of alchemical ingredients lining, lining the shelves. There's very few complete bottles uh, out on the shelves. Most of those are, are reserved for the shelf behind the counter, at which sits uh, a, uh, a a nervous-looking young man uh, playing with a, a, a an exaggerated forelock of hair, 
um, as he looks up and says, oh, 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 customers. Um, <clears throat> you've, you've, you've got this, Reginald. You can do this. Hello. Welcome to the, the, the bounty bottle, the, the bottle bounty. The Damn bottle it. bounty. You don't get many no, visitors, do you? I, no, I don't. So, sorry. Can you come <laughs> in again? Let me try this one more time. Uh, so immediately no so I'll humor you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I as will I. Oh, okay. All six All right. of us just out and then back in. Uh, Gray's just going to lean up on the wall. Okay. Uh, well, five out of six ain't bad, as, uh, the, as the Bard song goes. Um, welcome to the Bottle Bounty. Nailed it. All right. I applaud. <laughs> What, ask... do I, what do I can for... Damn it! <laughs> God damn it. Oh, I love this character. <laughs> so good. God damn it. Yeah, <laughs> Gray is not cracking his ass up because he's not a giggly bitch like me. <laughs> God damn it. All right, I'm gonna. <laughs> One sec. Okay. I'm gonna ask. Gray's gonna ask. Um, why the bottled bounty and not the bottled. <laughs> God damn it. And not the bottled botany? Well, because we serve other things. There's. It's not just flowers. It's or, or or even just plants. Sometimes there's there's uh, things you can do with with animal bones. Fair enough. Uh, and, and anyway, uh, so what what is it that you need? I, I, as a matter of fact, you're outsiders, aren't you? Oh, that's fascinating. I've grown up here, you know. Uh, I was born here. I, I've, 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 I've talked to maybe two outsiders my entire life. Well, no, those paladins were here, but they're gone now. Paladins? Wait, paladins? Yes, from the Archons of Light in, in Kirill. Oh, they were fascinating. You heard about them. We heard they died. Died? No, they, they left town. I saw them leave. Uh, I heard they left, but I heard they also died. I, I certainly hope not. I, I liked them. They were, they were, they were nice enough folks. Did they buy things from you? Uh, no, no. They, they actually came in to talk about uh, Lassoon. No, Saloon. Damn it! <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. That's a tick. I. Anyway, um, no, no. They came in to talk about their goddess. Uh, Saloon. Uh, fascinating lady, it sounds like. Um, uh, anyway, what's anyway, your name I, again? Uh, what? Your name again? Nedgerald. Reginald. You're so good at that. <laughs> yeah, you are. You're really yeah, like, you're you're good, good at that. that. You're switching around the earth. Listen, Reginald. What what kind of potions you got for sale here? We're some adventurers. We're not from around, or uh, maybe you got something special. What's what's the house specialty? Uh, well, it, it's mainly. I'll tell you. The main specialty is river water. No, river water. River water. The, the river's special, you see. And how exactly is it special? Well, have you have you been have you stopped to really look at it? Not. Have you been, have you been by there at night? No. Oh, you should. Oh, it's it's a gorgeous sight. There are flowers by the riverbed that that spring up at night and glow blue. And if you watch the water, it f it flows in a different direction at night than it does at day. What? Yes, it's it's the strangest thing. Well, I surprise do you I know. Do uh, you know where the source of the river is? Uh, well, no, it's in the mountains. I, I think. 
with such a wonder, it's a surprise you don't have more visitors to see such a sight. It is a done word. Wonder. Sorry. The, uh, what does the water do? Oh, well, it revitalizes you. It, it, it revitalizes you. Uh, it's almost magical, really. Um, uh, I would compare it to... Uh, well, I, I, I've seen a merchant or two come through here, and, and I would compare it to the healing potions they sell. You have a river that creates healing potions. Well, to a degree. You can't drink too much of it or it'll, it'll mess with your mind. People have odd dreams if they drink too much river water at once. Mm. Ah, Where nice. have we heard that before? Decius, not that I... You are outsiders, aren't you? I can't imagine how you would mistake us for anything else. Seeing not, very, uh, not very Kelmowing, Kelmowing no, welcoming uh, this town, is it? No. Well, and he, he, he seems to be on the edge of something. Uh, he can't tell if it's, if it's excitement or, or terror or a mixture of both uh, until he says, can I tell you something? Sure. I think this whole town's mad. Why would you say that? You know what Decius calls the river? Calls the river water? No. The blood of the goddess. I mean, quite clearly, it's got some magical properties, probably stemming, stemming from something going on with its spring towards the top of the mountain where it, it, it comes from, but it's not the blood of anything. It's water. That's a chemically different compound. Trust me, I would know. And where... Would you say that he says these things? Oh, during his services at church. Of course. The mayor always serves as the head priest, you see. Been that way ever since... Well... Ever since the town was founded, to my understanding. Hmm. Is there something special about the mountains, then? Well, not that I know of, but I've never been there. I, I rarely leave the village, you see. I, I've, I've, I've traveled some to Illyria with Maggie once. Gods, I hated to see her go. Terrible thing what happened to her. Still, you don't seem like the type to harm anybody. Not, not, not. Well, you are well armed, especially that one in the back with the armor. So, my friend Nedgerald, um, what's well, to stop us from? Hey, hey, now that seems like you're making uh, making one of fee. No, fun of me. Not at all. My mistake. This is a slip of, slip of the tongue. Tip of the slum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and what's to stop us from, say, filling our water bottles with water from the river? Uh, nothing. Other than the fact that anyone that takes from the land doesn't end up very well. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's not magical when we do that. I couldn't tell you. All I know is that when people drink the river water, they feel better. Wounds knit themselves on their skin. And by people, do you mean the natives? Well, yes, mainly the ones I see drink it. Well, I mean, they, we've already established they can give away, like, fruits and vegetables, right? If they're the one that takes it. Yeah. Out of game, yeah, if they're the one that so if this guy took it from the river, then we could buy from him. I would exactly. Is why he has a monopoly on it. 
but he can't sell too much of it at reduced price because it would cause people to have nightmares. I'm going to ask him, so if we would... Anybody can go down to the river, but I purify it. I I see. uh, If you buy a bottle from me, I can guarantee you won't have any nightmares. Nightmares. How much is a bottle, friend? Why don't you sell this, then, outside this place? I'm not really allowed. Decius doesn't like it when I leave the city. I leave the town. Uh, he's... He raises his finger up like he's going to say something, but then he he doesn't say something. Like... <laughs> Gray's not a a dumb guy. Um, he could see a very profitable, profitable business venture here in this particular place, especially since this guy purifies river water to be able to sell as healing potions, which he has basically an infinite supply of. A merchant would be drooling. Like, I mean, <laughs> I don't know how... To well, a merchant, it. With, a merchant with unfettered access to the town would be drooling, yes. Yeah, like, if he worked with this guy who is clearly seems to be as uh, not as confident and is able to have him make and purify several vials of water, they could, this merchant could sell it at basic prices and have a bountiful stock of this particular resource even reduce prices and make even even more money i don't know i uh, i i <laughs> i'm just thinking the market application of this thing uh, i'll be right back i need to use the restroom what what a great sentence i'm just thinking about the market applications of this thing for sure no uh, really, really. <laughs> speaking of desiccated things that's that's where bendak is terrell wait what no, Bendak? I'm saying no, Burndak. Isn't that what uh Brian's name is in the other game? Oh, oh, Burndon. Burndon, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Burndon Karsk. Yeah, Burn close enough. What's that? I love that. What's that? what's Burndon Karsk sound like, Brian? Right now, Burndon Karsk would get uh Burndon Karsk would sound like a giggly little schoolgirl. Phantom's right. It's a it's an infinite supply. It's a, it's a never ending gold mine. It's literally pissing gold. And then he would probably wander to the uh, bank of the river and take a piss in it, <laughs> knowing that it would get bottled, purified, and sold to one of these rubes. That's kind of what I was thinking. <laughs> our own universe, our own universe. <laughs> um, so does he sell the potions? How much are they? They are 15 gold apiece. 15? How much for a potion of, of will that would boost my will saves? Uh, he doesn't have that. <laughs> oh. No. We okay. do need like like just straight fifteen gold apiece. Yes, fifteen gold per potion. I'll take. Two. I'm pretty rich, and it sounds pretty pretty quenching. Got fifty nine left. How many did you take? Uh, I spent thirty. Okay. I mean, I got plenty of gold. But like, yeah, I'll spend thirty as well. All right. So these are functionally uh, healing potions. Yeah, yeah like two what, two what kind of plus, potion? Two D four plus two. Okay, so standard healing potion. Oh wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa! I don't want to buy any like fucking evil river water. That's not what I'm here for. I want like legit healing potions. Oh. Like actual healing potions, not purified oh, river water. Those are fifty. Oh, you're such a. <laughs> I pretend. 
I bought these knowing full well what's going to happen, but I <laughs> I haven't taken any psychic damage at all. So like so far, I think you guys are all pretty crazy. What's happened? I I just came back. Potions are fifteen gold each. They're two d four plus two healing potions of river water or whatever. I'm sorry, fifteen gold. Yes. Yeah. What about a? Uh... What will you charge me for a potion of greater healing? 44 plus 4. He says, I don't I don't have that. Uh I don't I don't I don't carry potions above a certain grade here. I, it's it's tough to find the materials. What other way? Uh, your, your friend was hoping to, for some sort of fortification of his senses? Uh apothem, was it? Yes. Um here and he mixes you some plants. Uh, and hands you, you can write this down in your character sheet because it's an item I made up, a uh, a potion a potion of the eased mind. Sweet. Uh, well, he, he, out, that's going to be 25 gold pieces for that potion. What's it do? Uh, it lets you heal 2d4 psychic damage right off your sanity meter. Yes, I want that. Uh, and it gives you for ten minutes advantage on saving throw, advantage on wisdom saving throws. That's but he a- has he has disadvantage. So would he just be like even? Yes. Yeah. If a, if you had double a thing that gave you disadvantage and another thing that gave you disadvantage and things that gave it advantage, it would still even out. That's how that system works, essentially. Basically, if you, no matter how much advantage or disadvantage you have, if you have at, like at least one source of each, they just cancel out entirely, and it's just yep. standard. Yep, yep, yep. At least it rules as written. Yes. Yeah, I, I use that. Uh, what other wares do you have? Dorn's basically just kind of poking around and seeing what he has. Mainly uh, herbs and spices of, for food, um, as well as things to sort of help the senses and dull pain. Interesting. I can mix something for, for uh, to help with uh, pain management. If, if if any of you are hurt, um, I did see you coming in from the woods the other day. Uh, after after I understand you took care of that cultist. Uh, something of the sort, yes. Yes, I, I um, I recommend uh, a, a potion for for managing your pain. Uh, mechanically speaking, that would be a potion that heals for one d eight and gives you advantage on con saving throws for ten minutes. Uh, I think Tyrrell might want. Uh, yeah, Tyrrell's the wizard, right? Emilreth is the no. wizard. As well. I think Immolarith might want something like that because con saving throws are important for uh, certain spells. I might want one of those. How much would a pain management potion like that cost? Uh, 25 gold pieces for the for the uh, for, for what I've got. I can make two. Oh, is that 25 each or 25 total? Uh, each. Yeah. Oh. I would be happy to take one off your hands. Gray is going to take a uh, healing potion since it's only 15 gold. Well, it's the water now. So, this chap bottles, uh, purifies bottles, and resells the river water, but it causes nightmares. So, if that's it's not if it's not purified, it causes nightmares, is what he said. Basically, he has a monopoly on just. I don't know what the purifying process takes, but it, he purifies it and he has healing potions. He has an infinite supply of healing potions without even having to go like, but like a block away. Why, which is said not, why they probably cost 15 gold because they're so fucking numerous. They're 50 gold normally. 
But did, he said too much of it in general causes nightmares, right? No, no, he yeah, purifies it so that you can drink the entire bottle of what he gives you without it causing any nightmares. Mechanically, uh, if you were to go and drink river water right now, to drink enough to have any effect, you'd have to roll uh, against a save on the on the on the pale child's gift. Yeah. So yeah, it basically yeah, he is he has as long as he purifies it, he has unfettered access to infinite healing potions that he's selling for ridiculously cheap prices. And like I said, this is why if a merchant <laughs> was able to get this guy to do this, would be able to make so much gold. Because even if they sold it at half the price, <laughs> don't <even. laughs> Yeah, you can have your like dirtle, uh, dirty, irradiated bottles of a uh, of water. Cola. <laughs> I'll take a nice corked flask of healing potion, please. Uh, sure, fifty gold pieces, please. Yeah, I bought three of them. I'm down to forty-seven gold. I I only had I didn't even near with that much gold. I don't think I've taken in any of the loot that's been dispersed thus far. I think we split everything, so that's on you. I I don't know. Well, maybe I didn't hear when that happened because I haven't notated it anywhere. Um, you got anything else? Reginald. What do you what do you need? Um something strong. You have to go to the tavern for that. Oh, you don't make anything like that? Okay. No, Aura would kill me if you found out I was making alcohol. Are you making alcohol? No. Oh. Oh. More like Terrell Pissbringer. Hi. <laughs> I regret so much the things that other people say and do. Uh, if you guys are done shopping, I can probably stop here. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I would like to ask him really quick. You know, sure. he seems you you seem fairly learned for a man of this town. Clearly, you don't. As, I'll take it as a compliment. No, but compliment. You can take it any way you like. Either way. Are you flirting with me? I don't know. Where is this going? <laughs> I... <laughs> um, no, not interested. And uh, okay. rega me, me neither. Definitely not. Regardless. You're not even that cute. You said right you were... But... <laughs> Excuse me, princess. <laughs> 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 oh fuck! Chaz is the start of this game. Uh, this is gonna be a horror game, guys. This is super serious. Chaz is at the end of the. Uh, Chaz is getting toward the end of this game. My name's Nedgerel. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair. That character totally fits in. Yeah. yeah <laughs> This, this is uh, escalating to the point of like uh, <laughs> where the fans are going to be like, if anything happens to Reginald, I will kill everyone in this room and then myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, but oh, regardless, yeah. you you said you were born in this town, correct? Yes. Brought up as a follower of the local religion. Yes, although I don't really buy it. Attended services, I'm sure, for a great many years. Yes. They forced me to. From one academic to another, please explain to me what goes on in that church. I'm not sure I should tell you. This is where you're going to need a persuasion roll. Hmm. 
Uh, anybody want to know? No. Imagine, no, imagine rolling dice in D and D. Who does? Imagine, that? yeah, yeah, right. Oh, Shit. okay. <laughs> Please, sir, I'm I'm only interested in a purely academic level. Your order is so strange and interesting. Wouldn't it be wonderful to let people know the world over how oh. unique you are? They, they come running, right? And they would... I mean, the land is bountiful, but it's only bountiful for, for us, for enough people. They demand so much. The services are simple affairs. Decius speaks and gives us sermons on, on, the, on the values of work and in progress and taking care of ourselves and self-reliance and isolationism and it's all very boring um there's uh, of course the the funerals where they dump the bodies down the well funerals how common are these funerals your small oh. town Whenever someone dies or reaches the end of their life, they they throw them down the well. It's um, it's always rather creeped me out, honestly. Why did uh, they do that? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go on. What um, what next in these ceremony in these services? Well, in the services themselves, there's a. That was unintentional, sorry. You're fine. Uh, in the services themselves, there's... Well, there's always the offering of... of, of food and... and, and uh, vegetable food and herbs to, to a pilea. Um, sometimes there's offerings of blood. Never enough to kill anyone, just... You cut your hand and bleed a bit on the food, and that supposedly makes it more worthy. This is very fucking creepy. Out of character, go ahead. And you have to give worthy food, worthy bounty to Apilia. Part of her... It's like giving... It's like a seed. You plant it and... It, it, it gives more than it was. It grows into something bigger. You give the food to Opilia, so the story goes, and she gives you back tenfold what you gave. Eventually, you give yourself to Opilia. That's what the funerals are for. You give yourself to the goddess of the earth by planting yourself within it, and we've used the well for that purpose. Digging doesn't get deep enough, Decius says. It has to be the well. I don't really what? want to talk about this further. It's been, what? Very, uh, it's been bringing up some very pun, as in unpleasant memories. Send me off with a good deal on a potion of heroism, then. <laughs> Potion of heroism. Uh, what, are, what are you looking to achieve? Uh, one after uh, one hour after drinking it, ten temporary hit points, uh, and for the same duration, so one hour of bless. No concentration required. I'll see what I can do. This is a magic reagent, so I don't know how much I've got. Hang on. And he puts together something. Uh, it takes him about 10 minutes. Um, but eventually he cobbles together and mixes up uh, some ingredients and says, well, I can do you the... I can do you part of it. Uh, it'll, it'll, it'll be 20 gold pieces, and this will give you um, some... May, help you feel like you're made of sterner stuff for a few moments. And it'll give you those effects for 10 minutes. Ten, uh, 20 gold pieces. Yeah. It's expensive materials. You're asking for magic, and all I've got is alchemy. 
I mean, it doesn't. Bottled, it... bottled heroism is still expensive. I'll give you 15 for it. Roll me another persuasion check with advantage because you rolled so well in the last one. Uh, a 17 Ooh. will do it. 17 will do it. Um, Good says, thing. 15 will do it, yes. Um, all right. Yeah. Reluctantly, uh, reluctantly, Emilrith reaches in his pouch, carefully counts out 17, and slowly hands it over to the to the apothecary. And accepts the... What do you want me to call it? 10-minute potion of heroism. There you go. Potion of sidekickism. No. Um... <laughs> you could just get a potion of heroism on your character sheet. Wait, oh, your character sheet's on uh, roll 20, right? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. Just put it in the set. We good? I'm gonna secretly pour that down like Terrell served at some point. <laughs> yeah, secretly just, hey, Terrell, look up and open your mouth. Just don't think about it. Pretend you're a turkey in the training. Ah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, that was fun. That was great. Yeah.